Hello and welcome back to another FL Studio 20 basics video. Today we're going to be covering shortcut keys and how these can help speed up your workflow. I'm going to be covering some really basic ones and then going into a few that are brand new for FL Studio 20. These should help you speed up your workflow and just feel a little bit more comfortable in the software. The first shortcut is probably the most important one and that is the F1 key. Pressing the F1 key will pull open the image line manual. If ever you're unsure what something does in FL Studio or you're looking to find out how to do something, just search it in here. If it's audio recording, for instance, it's going to give you a whole section on audio recording broken down really simply. And there's also an entire section just on keyboard and mouse shortcuts. I was in the process of putting together a cheat sheet full of shortcut keys, but they're all listed here. Absolutely every shortcut key in the program is listed here. So this is a good place to start. And what's also useful is that if you're on a section, like you select the channel rack and press F1, it will load up the help just for the channel rack. So it's really focused and helps you get exactly what you need. The next shortcuts are also on the F keys. And these are gonna help you, especially if you're working on a laptop or a smaller screen and you need to make the most of your screen sort of real estate. So the keys are F5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 12. F5 is going to collapse your playlist and pull it back up again. F6 is going to turn the channel rack on and off. F7 is going to pull up the piano roll for the instrument you're currently in. F9 is going to open and close the mixer and F12 is just going to close everything. In case everything gets a bit too much, F12 is going to close it. We missed out one key, which is F8. So if you press F8, it pulls open the plugin picker. So this shows you all the different plugins you have available to you, and you can simply drag and drop them into your project or into your effects chain. And if you hold control and press F8, it pulls open this, which is sort of your pattern picker. So you can listen to everything that's in your project. and also just drag and drop it straight into your playlist. Remember that if ever you're opening and closing these panels, you can open them up and you can press enter to detach them and you can, you know, put them over to one side, you can resize them and just try to make them fit for your screen. Rearranging things like this is really handy if you're working on a laptop. The next shortcuts are all focused on the playlist. So the first thing to get your head around is that all of these tools up here that you're very familiar with, the draw tool, the slice tool, the delete tool, they all have their own shortcut keys. And if you hover over one, FL Studio actually shows you what the key is in the hint box at the top. So it says that the draw tool here is P, the paint tool is B, the delete tool is D, etc. So the way you use these is instead of, you know, clicking on this and then saying, right, I want to cut that in half. Instead of moving up to here to hit the slice tool, coming back down, slicing it, you know, coming find a delete tool, deleting it, find the draw tool, clicking on it. It takes ages doing that. And I know I've exaggerated it. What you want to do is learn that you can just quickly hit C to cut it. P, delete, paint that bit over. Maybe you want to take the brush tool and just paint that out like that. It's a lot quicker and more fluid working like that than it is reaching up to this top bar all the time. A little tip with the cut tool is that if you right click and slice, it will delete either the right hand side or the smaller half, just like this, instead of having to cut and then delete that smaller section. So going over all of them, the draw tool is P, the paint tool is B, the delete tool is D, mute is T, slip tool is S, slice is C. Now we're gonna look at quick ways to select audio. So the E key is an easy way to select stuff, but you can do it if you have the regular draw tool open. So if you just hold control and left click and drag, it effectively has the function of the select tool. Now that you've actually selected those, you can perform functions on those as a group. Uh, simple ones would be copying and pasting. So you may know that if you use control C and control V, it's gonna copy and paste it over, but it just sort of pastes it anywhere. If you wanted to just copy it across into the next available slot, you could just press control B and it's just gonna paint it across there for you. Saves you a little bit of clicking and dragging. One new function for FL Studio is the ability to consolidate audio. So what you can do is select some MIDI or some audio and then press Control, Shift, Alt and C and then it will pull up this sort of render panel. If you press Start, it's gonna consolidate that to audio so that it's no longer running through MIDI. Sometimes navigating the playlist can become a little bit cumbersome and you have to sort of scroll up into these bars at the top or drag here or drag here and it can take a while to actually find what you want. So some easy ways to navigate, you can middle click anywhere and drag to just move the screen fluidly like this. You can also press control and use the scroll wheel of your mouse to zoom in horizontally 
or zoom out horizontally. Or you can also hold Alt instead and scroll and it will scroll vertically. This is sometimes a lot quicker than using the scroll bars at the top and the side. The last shortcuts I wanted to show are inserting tracks and also grouping them. So at any track, if you just right click and press I, it will insert a new track. And on any track, if you right click and press G, it will group it with the track above. To insert another one into the group, you just right click and press I and it will keep inserting them together. Let's take a look at the mixer. So I'm gonna open up the mixer by pressing F9 and there's a few handy shortcut keys here as well. The first one is that if I select a channel and press Alt and L, it will highlight on the channel rack which instrument or sample is being sent to this channel. For instance, I can see here that it's this Moog bass. Similarly, if I select a channel and then press Control and L, it will send it to somewhere on the mixer and it will name it and color it according to how you have it named and colored in the channel rack. A shortcut to help you move mixer tracks is that if you're on a mixer track and you hold down the shift key and scroll up and down on your mouse, it moves the track left and right. When arming a track to record, instead of going into the top here and press disk recording render to wave file, you can just press alt and R and it will pull open the render track and you can render it just like that. The last shortcut I'm going to show is to quickly change the waveform view on the mixer. So if I play around some audio and press Alt and W together, it will change from a dB meter to a waveform view. The last shortcut keys are just going to quickly focus on the channel rack. So the first one is to select multiple channels. Just hold down the shift key and just select the ones that you'd like. Once you have them selected, you can do all sorts of group tasks on them. I've recently posted a brand new video all about the channel rack in FL Studio 20 and showing what's new, so you can go over there to find out a little bit more about this. The next tip is that if you're on a channel, a quick way to move the steps in the step sequencer is to hold down shift and control and then right or left arrow keys moves them just like that. Instead of having to always, you know, paint them in manually like this it can be good to just test different rhythms by just moving them sideways like that and the last shortcut is just that if you want to make a new pattern you can just press f4 and it creates a new pattern you can name and color it and then you just start working in your new pattern instead of having to go up to here and create a new pattern each and every time well that's just about it for this video i'm going to leave all of those shortcuts in the description down below and you can always use the fl studio manual to find out any more shortcuts that you'd like to know so thank you very much for watching this fl studio basics video and i do hope to see you and more videos in the future. Bye for now. Oh,